Look at a green light. We're up and running, folks. We'll give everybody a few minutes to jump on into the stream. It's 3 o'clock. and may straggle in. That's no problem at all. We'll wait till people show up. And they usually start chatting before uh, I start to see them over here in the uh, in the number watching window. And today we're going to talk about grading coins because grading them is kind of important if you want to find out what it is and what the value of a coin is. Oh, Miss Flea Market Coin Hunters, we've got one in. Class is in session. Don't forget to like the video. Oh, I, apparently I've been scrolled down on the screen here, so I haven't seen that. Let me tweak this just a bit more. There we go. And Sebastian Garcia has joined us. Chris Hurley, good fella. Ezekiel Rodriguez, I have your email. Uh, Victor Cruz, Flea Market Coin Hunters. You'll be able to visit... Uh, his channel really is he's got some good stuff going on always. He goes to flea markets and you know, cherry picks the heck out of the places. He does great there. Katie Armstrong, heavy metal silver. We got a fairly good little crew going on. Take your seats. I gotta get a bell so I can ring that. The one guy's gotta cut a train whistle. I gotta get a, a school bell. That'll work. Now I gotta have I gotta have a uh, oh a trivia question later on because we're giving away uh, of course, every week we give away books. Other people give away, you know, coins and stuff. I give away information. Uh, we've got a copy of uh, the 2015 Red Book, or you can have the 2015 Black Book. It's thicker, but it's not as, you know, not as tall. They're both good quality books. The Red Book is a standard, of course. Uh, I grew up on the Black Book. It's what we had back in Maine in the, you know, around 1979. Now the Red Book packed with information. Uh, you've got prices and what's important here you know you look up your coin you get a 1920 Lincoln cent and you look it up and you see 57 different prices for you know 1920 Lincoln cent a lot of people they look and say oh the biggest number here is you know $200 my coin is worth $200 meanwhile it's you know you can barely see the date on the darn thing uh, condition of the coin is, is critical if you don't understand the condition of the coin uh, it's hard to look up the value you got to realize a, a nice shiny coin in, in mint grade, just like the day it was uh, produced, is going to be worth more than one that's been kicked around the parking lot for, you know, six or seven months. It's all scratched up and dinged up. So anyway, you'll have your choice of those. Of course, every winner gets a uh, 10x loop. And I've got one handy here. If you're going to get into uh, really looking deep into the details, one of these is a must. They're not expensive, but uh, we'll give it away. Now, Beth Goddington has supported the channel, so we're giving away more stuff. We've got uh, a couple of dozen flips, so you can see your coin, find out what the value is, and then store it safely so you don't destroy the darn thing uh, over time. And we're also adding in a Lincoln Cent folder. These are really handy when you're, when you're getting started. Uh, I mean, I cut my teeth on the darn things. This one's number two. It goes from 1940, uh, PDNS, all the way to 1974. The pennies just snap into a, a depression. Real handy there. Uh, if you don't if you don't use these things, there's a 12 year old somewhere in your life who would just jump all over that. So we'll get onto that. And I got to invent a trivia question. I think that's the only thing I left out today. Anybody new? Jerry Holders has joined us. Good to see you, Jerry. A dozen people, but make sure you smash the like button. Ray Hepburn is here. He's the only one I ship to Canada for. I don't ship to Canada no more. And Devin has joined us. He came over from uh, from Sylvia's channel. That's okay, Devin. We won't hold it against you. This class is made for you, right? And I hope you win this because you're gonna you're gonna use that baby. I'm sure. Okay, let's get into it. A dozen people, we're five minutes past the hour. It's five minutes past the hour. And I have over here a whole bunch of pennies. A uh, little bit of everything here. You know, 30s, 40s, 50s, teens, 20s. But I need to know what the grade is. Okay? Uh, a well-worn coin won't have the same value as one that's, you know, brand new, shiny, like, say, that one. You can see the difference. Collectors are pretty demanding. Uh, they took it all the way up to uh, having them certified 
uh, and place them in these uh, hermetic, hermetically sealed uh, capsules uh, to stay in that condition for a long time. These are acrylic holders. And of course I have those if you'd like to uh, step it up a notch. Let's say here's a, uh, here's a half dollar in one of these. Those are well worth it uh, if you start getting into you know, more valuable coins. But what I want to show you is a little website called PCGS Photograde. Now that slab you just saw uh, is PCGS. They encapsulate the darn things. They grade them. They have a professional team with lots of experience. And let's jump over to that. How do I do this? Let me see. Screen. No, kind of. Wow, this is... Here it is. Hopefully you're seeing what I'm saying. I'm going to cheat and take a look. Yeah, you can see that. Let me get my software stuff out of the way. PCGS photo grade. You can pick out your coin depending on the denomination. Is it a colonial or a half cent or a dime? Or is it one of them big gold coins? You know, you can pick it out. Now I talk about Lincoln cents because, let's face it, most people collect Lincoln cents. It's the most widely collected coin in the history of the world. And uh, they're easy to look at. They only cost a penny. Now you click on this where it says cents, it'll give you a choice you know, uh, Indian cents, large cents, Lincoln cents, Lincoln memorials. Go from there. And this is going to bring you over to this screen. Now here, it's going to show you every coin or every grade in these in this series, all the way up to MS-68. And all the way down to, well, just plain wore out and tired. And you can see the difference between this, you know, this about good, where there's almost no detail. His head looks like, uh, well, bathroom tile, for lack of a better word. The rim's worn down. There's no detail in the wheats. Uh, you can barely see his bow tie. Mid-range coins, you have something like VF, where you've got cheek and jaw and hair and berries and lines. A little higher up, you're going to have, uh, you know, just the slightest bit of, uh, of wear on these. And when you start getting into the mint state grades, they take on better tone, luster, and finally ending up with a superior color, uh, balanced uh, within the... Uh, within the die so that, you know it's not off center and it's a good sharp strike even strike uh you don't have any filling in from say the back where it fills in the uh or the the, the vest on the, on the front you've got a sharp strike everywhere so we're going to take a look at these pennies over here let me jump back to this and uh scope wide there we go it's a wide screen uh we've got a whole lot of pennies we didn't want to decide what the grade is, okay? I'm going to take one at random right off of here and stick it under the uh, under the scope. Let me find the scope. Here we are. And I got a something pretty to look at when uh, the scope is just sitting here. Here we got a coin with some you know some detail. It's got a lot of contact marks, but you can still see it has uh, some ear on there. You know you got some lines in the vest that are can be found. In the back, you've got uh, some wear on the wheat ears, right? You can still see the berries, but uh, you can't really pick out an individual berry. You can see the spaces in between. Okay, this one would come in at probably very good. Now, I could take this coin and compare it to photo grade. I can just hold it up to the screen and take a look and say, yep, this matches that one the best, right? The next one, fine. It's not that good, okay? But it's far better than... And they're very good so i'm able to compare visually uh, where that coin is going to be now what you can do is build a reference set this gets interesting we're going to go back to the home screen here if we can do that and if i can put these in order okay we know this is this one has a fair amount of wear so i'm going to set that right down here on the bottom where are you here we are you're right in here and i'm going to take the next one and compare that one there goes my focus. There we go. Figured out how to trick it to make it come back. Now you take another coin, and any will do. Well, this camera is just not good enough, so we'll hold it up back over here to, to the scope. Okay. Now here it's it's not so worn out, uh, but not a whole lot of detail on this. You know, you barely have an ear. On the back, you know, there's some detail. Now this one's neat because the obverse is worn more than the reverse. Well, whichever one is lower, 
that's the one you're going to base your grading on. So going back to the front, the obverse, um, this would be good condition, maybe a little bit better. Uh, but I want to put that over here next to that first one. Because if you take a whole bunch of coins and just start lining them up from, from worst to best, you're going to come up with a, a, grade, a graded set. Uh, now you have a, a reference tool that you can assemble right at home with the coins you have. And let's have a look at this one. So that you can then check you know, for yourself if you don't have the photo grade available. This one's in better shape, a 1921S. You've got uh, you know, some cheek and jaw lines that are starting to appear. You can just start to see some of this detail. And on the reverse, of course, about the same. Okay, so I'm going to put that third in line. And look at the next one. But you can go through and keep on doing this. Uh, I mean, you got a handful of coins. You can probably put together a pretty good set. Here I've got uh, separation between the cheek and the jaw. I've got uh, lines in the uh, shoulder, the vest, around the bow tie. A lot of detail starting to appear. This was not tore up so bad. On the back, I've got full wheat lines and individual separated berries. But they do kind of blend in in some spots. This one would be very fine. So I'm going to put this over here. And hopefully my book is thick enough to jack up all those coins so we can see them once they've been put in order. Okay, then we get this one. It's, it's ruined. There's not much left to it. The rim is starting to flow in. You go back to PCGS you just photo grade, and this will compare to the AG, about good example. Now, let me tell you about that scale that they use, um, getting back to PCGS. Okay. This fellow, William Sheldon, was writing about uh, large sense. And he put a book out in 1949 where he explained uh, his idea for a, for a grading scale, where he divided it into 70 different parts. Um, and each, you know, each scale metric would be a different grade. So you have fair, poor, about good, good, fine, very fine, extremely fine. Then you have almost uncirculated or about uncirculated. And then you have the mid-state coins. Now, his original intention was that, uh, you know, the fair one or the poor one was worth, you know, however many dollars, uh, depending on that, on that particular date. And uh, say a good, which was good for, would be worth four times as much. Well, the, the idea was sound, but uh, putting it into the market, uh, collectors kind of took a hand and well, bid stuff up. So it really didn't work that MS-70 was 70 times as valuable as MS-1. Nonetheless, uh, in 1970, the ANA, American Numismatic Association, uh, adapted his 70-point uh, scale uh, for their uh, standard grading system. And, and it's been you know, pretty darn effective in, uh, in standardizing everything ever since. I'm going to go back to the home page. And I've been putting things in order, as you can see here. We're down on this side. I've got, oh, about good. And I've got something that's good, then a little better than good. And we've got uh, very good. And of course, I've got different grades in here. And you can keep doing this until you have a reference set. Now, once you have that set, then you can take any coin and hold that up to your own set and say, this one is fine, right? I've got a, uh, a 1918D in fine condition. Now you can look it up in the book. Okay, let me find that. Those are dimes. Let me adjust these. There we go. Small sense. Let's say I have a 1918D. Let me bring that over here. Okay, there's 1918D. There's good, very good, and fine. Now I know my coin is worth 75 cents. Pretty darn handy. Now I've got some links that will give you some values on coins online. Uh, there's Numis, which I think is uh, probably the best uh, uh, price guide out there for you know for up-to-date prices. I mean, you can get the gray sheet if you want to go that way, or the, the red book. Now, some of these books, they have prices in there. Uh, they're fairly accurate. Most of the stuff isn't going to climb much, you know, in a couple of years. This book is, uh, is 2015. There we go. Uh, a lot of these weights, uh, that 1918D and fine, 
it's probably still worth 75 cents. I don't think it went to $35 in a couple of years, but it'll give you a real good idea of what the, uh, what the market value is. But really much less than a couple of bucks. You know, it's a, it's a decent coin. It'll help you fill your, help you fill your folder. But uh, it's not what I would call a highly valuable coin. But nonetheless, um, get them all. It's a lot of fun, and there's no end to it. Now let me run over to chat for just a moment and see if I can catch up with everybody. Oh, I'm like uh, I'm like 20 minutes behind here. Uh, Beth has joined us. Beth has made it possible for us to go to the folders and include the flips. Jerry's joined us. Anthony Goodley has joined us. Good to see you. And Marty Poles. Also, I have your email, Marty. I'll be taking care of that a little later. Penny Whimsy. Penny Whimsy came out, what, when was that? Uh, the 40s? Uh, Penny Whimsy is an outstanding volume. I'm trying to get a copy so I can, uh, you know, read it and then give it away. Always read your books, and when you're done, give them to somebody else, because uh, information never goes out of style. Now, let me go over my notes here, see if we're right up to date. Yeah, there we go. You're going to find that uh, grading these coins is a subjective activity. Now, some people will agree that, you know, it's it's fairly good, you know, it's in decent shape, it's nice, all kinds of different terms. Let me put this one over here. But it's still subjective, no matter what. Uh, people who collect coins, uh, especially younger people with less experience, tend to overgrade, okay? And a lot of sellers tend to overgrade. Excuse me. <coughs> Now, the problem with overgrading when you're selling your coins, uh, if you go from very fine to extremely fine, a lot of times there's a, a leap in the price because the quality of the coin has improved so much. Let me get something decent to look at here. There we go. Once you start getting into the higher grades, that little bit extra uh, higher, you know, higher grade with better detail can amount to, we're talking hundreds or thousands of dollars. Uh, 1914 D and XF is probably good for 750 bucks. In AU, it's 1500. So that little increase in value or in grade is can be you know massive amounts of change. So sellers often will describe a coin as VF plus uh, or choice AU instead of AU, just to increase the value of the coin or at least. Uh, the per perception by the seller. So it's good if you're buying coins to have a good grip on uh, grading so you're not paying too much. Uh, I tend to undergrade. This one is a great example, without a doubt. We got some luster. Is it AU? I think it is. Is it choice AU? I'm going to go on the safe side and call it AU uh, so I don't rip off my customers because now you have such things as reputation to consider. And you do better to keep a keep a customer happy rather than you know overcharge and uh, charge them too much. They're just going to send it back. Well, now you're just wasting your time, wasting their time, spending money on shipping they don't need to. So it's good to get an idea of the grades. Uh, but what it comes down to in the end is a consensus. Uh, what most people would call this for a grade. Some people call this XF. Most people are going to call this AU. Might be some people that say, oh, that's that's brilliant and circulated. Look at the darn thing. And a lot of times it's the uh, less experienced people that will tend to overgrade. Once you start getting into the mint, uh, the mint state coins, uncirculated, the amount of detail that goes into it starts to change. If you see, where's my 20 stick? This one I've got uh, a spot here. I've got a small contact mark right behind the head with a spot. There is a little contact mark right here. Okay. And these little tiny details, because everybody wants the perfect coin, uh, those small details can make the difference between MS-63 and MS-64. Let's look at the back of that. And straighten it out. Okay. And here I've got great quality. But I've got a small blemish right in there. So when I'm selling, you know, premium grade coins, I always point out all these blemishes so people can 
you know, judge for themselves what the grade is. And some of these are just beautiful. Now with copper, you've got another uh, oh descriptor in there. This one is red. I've got this coin over here, as you can see, let me straighten it out, is brown. And then you get the ones in between, right, that are red-brown. Now, the difference here, this is more brown than it is red, okay? The red is at least 95% red, All right? So you can have a small, you know, small bit of, uh, of toning on there. Uh, the brown is uh, up to 95% brown. And red-brown, right here, would be 5 to 95%, uh, well, depending on which, which, which end you go from. Uh, but it'll be at least 5% red and no more than 5% brown. Is that right? Well, you get the idea. It's a mix. It's in the middle. So it takes a little bit of experience to uh, you know, in grading these coins. And you need to go through a lot of coins to uh, to become uh, you know fairly critical and objective with this. Let me set these back up over here. But once you've got them all lined up, and this is your homework for the for the week, um, you can refine it more perfectly. I'm not even showing it here. Where do I get that back? There we go. You can refine it better. You can set up a charge. This one's real simple. I just scribbled on a piece of paper. But now I can take the coin and I can put my, you know, my VF over here. Right. There we are. I can set my fine coin in that, in that section. I can set this one as XF. I can set it over there, which is off the screen. But you'll probably get the idea if I slide it over and show you. There you go. XF. AU. Uncirculated. Brilliant uncirculated. Choice BU. BU is brilliant uncirculated. And you'll see this sometimes when people are selling coins. My coin is BU. Okay, brilliant. Means you get a full red luster. This one's this one's choice, but it's not brilliant. Okay, this one. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. No question about it. That is a beautiful coin. Alright. When you see choice, brilliant uncirculated, uh, it's MS sixty three. If you see very choice, it's MS64. If you see gem uncirculated, MS65. Uh, if you see a coin described as superb gem, MS66. And higher than that, you're probably not dealing with them in, in some of these Facebook groups. Higher than that, you're probably getting, getting into slabs where they get up to uh, MS69, MS70. This is what an MS69 looks like. Almost perfect. Where's the blemish? I don't know. I can't find it. But that's how, you know, that's the level of quality you're going to get on these uh, these top grade coins. All right, that's enough of this. Let me set that aside. So overgrading, undergraded, PCGS photograde, and building a reference set. If you can handle all that, uh, you'll be able to pick it up pretty easily. Let me get back into chat. And if I can catch up with everyone. Excuse me. Let me give you something to look at in the scope while we check the chat. 17 people are here. Love it. Everybody hit like and be sure to subscribe. Cheryl has showed up. Um, I got an email from you, I think, Cheryl. Let me check. Um, I'll get back to you on that. I'd love to have would that go? It ran away. Somebody would love to have something. Beth says, are you wearing comfortable shoes and a parach and parachute pants? No, I'm wearing shorts and I'm barefoot because I'm in Florida and it's nice every day. Cheryl's up north. It's cold here. Oh, you can have that. And Luz Faru has joined us. Okay, Beth Coddington asks us, are Choice BU and Gem BU the same thing? Uh, nope, Choice BU uh, would be MS63. Now, BU is brilliant uncirculated, but I can have uncirculated coins that have different grades. Let me grab a couple of these out here. I'll put them under the scope. Because they do pick up contact marks. They, 
Uh, they go through the mint. They, the mint slams the coins together. They get dropped into a hopper. Uh, some of these coins are going to be bounced around. They'll be on the bottom of the hopper, and these coins will be dropping in a long ways to, to get there, so they're going to leave marks on it. Okay, so you have, you're going to have contact marks. Uh, from the hopper, they're dumped into mint bags and counted out. Again, they're taking a lot of tumbling. So you have contact marks. Uh, maybe not on this one. Here you go, this is 1946. You can see in front of his chin, behind his head, in the field above the date. You'll see just these little little dings where another coin came in and, and struck it. Uh, I've got this one over here. Not so many contact marks, but I do have a lot of blemishes. Let me flip that baby over. And again, great detail, but not many contact marks. Now, if you're handling these BU, it's always a good idea to have a glove on. There we are, because as, as you can see here, these little tiny dots, that's from handling. And if you've got a fingerprint, well, the best you're going to get for grade is MS-63. All right, you can get these. These are, uh, I picked these up at Walmart, the latex gloves. They're made for, you know, wearing gloves. You can move these and washing dishes, handling a sick baby, uh, putting them pills up your dog's butt. Okay, they're really good at Halloween. You can stretch them out, put them on your head. You can be a rooster, you can be a, you know, a turkey, you can be a cow. Um, five, six bucks will give you how many? 50 different gloves. Pick them up, and when you're handling these, uh, these brilliant uncirculated coins, you're not getting your fingerprints on them. I've got to have one here that, uh, let me look behind me. Here we are. I know this one, I have some marks. Okay, we'll get a 1960. And as you can see, it has uh, has more marks above the date. They're longer, you know, kind of sometimes a little bit deeper, more noticeable. You got some on the shoulder uh, over there beside In God We Trust. Um, it's not where uncirculated means nowhere, but here I've got a I've got a fairly you know prominent uh, contact mark under God. Another one here, and you'll get them. Let's look at his face. I'm sure we got something here. You know, the different spots, uh, there's a contact mark over here. There's a, you know, a good shiny spot. These finer lines were, not the coins were just jostling in a bag, for example. And if I flip that over, I'm going to find some more there. Let's bring that up. Down below the memorial here. And I move that camera back and forth to try to show you better. I've got some, uh, some marks in here. They're not huge. I mean, the condition, I've got beautiful steps all the way across. I've got all the uh, detail at the top of Memorial. I've got, a, I've got a fine rim all the way around, but I've got a lot of these marks. This one, although it's brilliant really uncirculated, I would say that there are too many uh, contact marks for this to even be choice brilliant uncirculated. So I just call this BU, and that works pretty darn good. Once you get into something like, say, this one, yes, this one's choice. Very few contact marks compared to that one I just showed you. I just dropped that one. And I've got brilliant luster all the way across it. Not a whole lot of spots into attracting uh, features. And no darn fingerprints. This one over here, whoa. This is more, well, it's not as brilliant as it should be. It's a red brown. Alrighty, looking out the, the other side. It's red brown. It's mostly red, but it's got enough brown in there that it's not fully red. <coughs> now you can be brilliant, you can be uncirculated, and you can be brown. Okay? Uh, the color tone designation is separate from the grade. You're going you're gonna to find a lot of people don't want to touch anything that's, you know, less than full red. Me, I like them full red. There ain't no going back. They're cherries. And then there's some folks that like the BM because you get the tones, you get the colors, you get the, you know, the beautiful uh, rainbow effects in there. Now a gem, and once you hit MS-65, you're looking at a, at a coin that has uh, nothing visible, no visible marks or uh, disparaging marks. This, not, this 2017, and this is, this is to the naked eye. Um, this is probably MS-64. Just because you know it's the new ones that make so darn many, they they drive over them in trucks. Uh, but an MS65 isn't going to have 
oh, the contact mark on the chin here. It's not going to have this tiny contact uh, right here. You're looking at uh, pretty much a coin that is that is near perfect, but you can have some spots, for example. Uh, you can have uh, some discolorations, uh, some uneven toning, where it's uh, you know mostly pink here and kind of bright pink there and kind of dark pink there. But once you get past MS65, then those little uh, those little details really start to matter. Okay, here we go. These are uh, these are rinse spots from when they treated the planchets, and it's been like this for years, and it's not going to change. So finding good quality shield sets in the higher MS grades, it's tough. I mean, you can go through roll after roll after roll, and maybe you'll find a few MS 65s, uh, but they get spots all over the darn things. What are you going to do? Let me continue on here. Katie has 200 subs. Well, congratulations, Katie. Everybody get over to Katie's channel and subscribe to her. She's got great content, I'm sure. I, I have to get over there and find out. Collect Everything says, these streams really helped me out. I'm glad to hear that. Um, come back. We we'll do this every week. And if you have ideas that you'd like to see covered, I'd be more than happy to cover them. Let me see if I can go down a little bit more. Hey guys, my free giveaway video is up. Go check it out. That's Devin. He just got 50 subs. Uh, he's pretty happy with that. It's a, it's, it's a big milestone getting 50 subs. Uh, it took me, I don't know, two years. Once you get past there, it starts to pick up. So stick with it. So Katie's doing great. Devin's doing great. And we go from there. Now, I'm going to jump over to... If we can pull this up. Here it is. Let me get this up. And finding this software. We're going to go to the screen. Yeah, because the, the capture doesn't work. I can't capture just... This thing's acting up again. Okay, so you're going to stare at this. Now, I've got in the links down below, uh, in the description here, I've got a link to this thing, which is the coin inventory and checklist. Now, the first page is just... You know, links and gibberish. Don't worry about that. Uh, it takes a moment here. The next page is inventory. And this gets interesting. And really, um, I need to do a class just on this to give you an idea how that works. Uh, but after that, I've got several series already lined up. And I'm starting to add more vintage figures. But here, you can print this up at your own, uh, you know, leisure. Uh, I could probably print them up and, you know, charge it like 10 cents a page. But uh, one column in here in particular is where it says grade. And how could I change? I think I could change that color to show it up better. No, oh, no matter. Here. I'll type here. Okay. Um, you can enter the grade of your coin. There's a checkbox. You can check it off. You have that. When you get full checks, you let me know because I want to put you in my blog. Uh, we re I really need to add a... Uh, Oh, a heroes sections for you know people who had major achievements by completing uh, a full set of Lincolns. It is a it took me 40 years to complete a set of Lincolns, and I finally sold off the the SVDB. So I only had a complete set for about a year and a half. Uh, but when you have the grade, you can figure out what the value is, and that's that's the next key. And if you look at the top of uh, this checklist, I see totals. And I've got just an 8 in there. But that's actually a formula which will add up everything in this column. So if I have a coin and it's worth $12, and I hit the button there, my total is going to include the value of all these coins. $15, $2, $0.25. Yeah, here's a map proof for $0.25. Cents. But this will give you a way to keep track of your, your, uh, your collection. Um, Keep track of the total of what is what the value is. So when you go to sell it, you've also got a column in here for what you paid. Now let's see. And we'll have a 1909 VDB. You paid ten dollars. It's worth twelve dollars. So you, you didn't do too bad. And you have notes. I uh, got it from pizza the pizza shop. If I can spell right, no. And that comes in pretty handy. Now you can copy the entire spreadsheet and create your own Google spreadsheet uh, and just do it all right here online. 
And boy, it's pr pretty handy. It'll save you a whole lot of paper because I go through some ink on this uh, this printer over here, I can tell you for sure. Uh, but again, you have to know the grade. Once you have the grade, you can get the value. And once you have the value of each of your coins, you can total, it up, total everything up and start marketing them or trading them off with other people so you can improve your set. And, well, you know, you're good, 1909. It's probably a, a treasure to somebody who doesn't have a 1909. I'm going to zip back over here and see where we are. Home. There we are. I'll give you this to look at for now. Now I've got to talk about the PCGS and the slabbing services next. Find out what's going on in chat. Stream is working a lot better. Yes, no lagging clear. I had a problem. I was using Google Hangouts uh, with another collector. And, you know, we'd just get online and do video chats and show coins back and forth and brag and say mine's better than yours. Uh, it worked out great, but it uh, it messed up the, the live stream software, the OB something, OBS or OBW. Uh, I ended up deleting the whole darn thing, reinstalling it, hooked up the Wi-Fi uh, directly to computer, you know, with a cord from the phone line rather than use the Wi-Fi. Ran antivirus software. I mean, just just beat it, beat it with a hammer in effect, and it's working pretty well now. I gotta I gotta say that I'm pretty impressed. I don't have to go to my brother's house now. How to reply to a comment? All is good now, says Katie. Devin Ailes is going to take off. We'll see you later, Devin. Been good to have you here. Lutz Faru says he used Annex to grade my first coin this last week. Outstanding. Uh, I don't have an Annex, but I've got, uh, let's see, oh, several PCGSs. Here's an NGC. Uh, when you get them slabbed, the coin is protected by the slab. But nothing protects the slab. So I put them in Ziploc bags. Let me pull one out and show you exactly why. That's it. Here we go. Because once you start scuffing up that slab, I mean, these are permanent. It costs 12 bucks to replace it. Well, that's a crime all by itself. But yeah, it costs money to, to repair the damage. Let's run over to the scope. And you can see here what happens when a coin in a slab uh, has been you know, worked on, scuffed around. It makes it real tough to start taking decent pictures of these coins. I get a lot of reflection. But if I bend it, bend it right, uh, still I have all these hairlines all over that, uh, all over that slab. And I've had these so bad, I couldn't take a picture at all. Well, selling in person is one thing, but if you're gonna sell your coins or trade them online, you need to take a photograph because that's the only way you can see the coin. So protect those darn things. Now there's three primary uh, third-party graders called TB, TPG, third-party graders. Oh, and this one, by the way, is the, oh, I'll show it over here. That is, wide screen. There you go. That's a two cent piece from 1864 and MS64 Brown. And it's a peach, baby. I'll probably offer this up for sale when I'm done staring at it. And there's the back of it. It's beautiful. Got a little little hints of luster here and there. Uh, but when you have these more valuable coins, these higher grade coins, you can consider putting them in slabs. Now these slabbing companies, they charge you and they charge you a hefty fee. Something like this. I know that this coin cost the owner, a uh, pretty good friend of mine, cost him uh, $80 to package it, ship it insured, pay for the grading, pay for the guy who sent it to be shipped because he had a, an account with NGC, uh, and for return shipping. Cost him 80 bucks to, uh, to get that coin graded. People ask all the time, should I get this graded? Dude, it's a 1964. It's MS-65. It's a gem, no question about it, but it's worth, you know, a dollar. Some people do get these coins graded so that they, they can have their complete set of graded MS-65s. Uh, at what point is it worth it? Well, you should be able to at least recover uh, the value that you put into uh, to this grading. You don't get gained value. An MS-64 coin should be worth MS-60, you know, the MS-64 price if it's slabbed or unslabbed. But they do have a little bit of value. And this one, of course, we have details. 
Um, but this one is guaranteed authentic only. NGC, PCGS, if you uh, get your coin slabbed with them, you've got a guarantee built in, right? If the coin is graded incorrectly and you take a loss, you can file a claim with them and you can get some recovery. That's part of their, their satisfaction guarantee. Uh, but really, what you need to do is get, send it back in and have it re-slabbed. Of course, they charge for that. So the only added value is that protection. Uh, a lot of people want to get it slabbed because, hey, it's going to be worth more. But it's not really going to be worth more. It's still the coin, not the package that you want to pay for. Uh, NGC and PCGS do have that added service, which, which helps to you know, give it a little value. But you, you can see the difference between uh, you know, a slab that's been protected there's not a scratch or scuff on that versus a slab that, you know, was stored in somebody's tool drawer in their kitchen. We all have that one drawer in the kitchen. There we go. We can start to see the scuffs on that. We all have that one drawer in the kitchen with, you know, everything in the house goes in there. What do I do with this? We put it in that drawer. That's the default drawer. But if I get too many scuffs, well, the slab is, it's going to protect the coin, but it's useless for, for viewing. So protect those. Uh, and I have to do an article on you know when's it appropriate to slab a coin. If it's going to cost you eighty dollars, you got a really good price on it. It's been in the family for a hundred years. Uh, it's a valuable or rare coin in, in, in higher grade, and it's probably worth being slabbed. And here's one again, properly stored. Hey, there's my new camera. You can just see it right there. I had to have one with a. Uh, wide angle so I could show several coins at the time and it's really working. I'm happy with that. Now get these bags. You can put your slabs in there and they'll stay safe. This will take a rubbing in a drawer. And another thing to do is put them you know in something that's going to keep them immobilized. Uh, the coins are graded and you want to just keep keep protecting them. If nothing else, a Ziploc bag works great. There we go. I keep them around. Uh, you get them at Walmart. These are great value. Yeah, they're Walmart. And they get the little sliders on top. Seriously, go get some Ziplocs and protect your stuff. But for the coins, well, people like to have one size more appropriately. So there's smaller Ziploc bags out there. This will hold any size slab you want. You know, the Mostly they're the same size. Annex, they get a little curl at the top. Uh, NGC, they're a little, a little bit wider. But for the most part, they're the same size. But protect those babies. Oh, it's PCGS is a little bit wider. Give them some protection so you can take photos when you need to. Let's have a look at chat. Hershey cookies and ice cream is... Are we talking about ice cream? Chuff bags. Ludes, I don't understand what chuff bags... Uh, what that term means. Ken, can you touch on the subject of NQ's doubling? Yes, I can, MW. Give me just one moment to catch up in the chat, and I'll have to get some NQ's coins. The difference between VF and XF is $1,250. That's why people like to get them gra uh, get, get a coin graded, and they send it off. Um, this is where the, the, the slab coins come in handy, is sight unseen trading. Uh, PCGS certifies and, and guarantees uh, that their grading is accurate. So you can trade coins with people and never see the coin. But you are buying an MS66, you know, 1909 SVDB, and you've got a pretty solid value that you can, you can look up on that. You can check uh, auction records. Uh, and without seeing the coin, you know that it's guaranteed at that grade. So as Lude was saying, if you go up just one grade from, say, MS69 on this one, this is a $35 coin, right? MS69. In MS70, that's $1,000. Pretty nice, uh, pretty nice deal. Getting that little bit extra. I mean, you're talking big money on a lot of these coins. Big Tour has showed up. Glad to hear you. And Lou's got his first Anax graded this week. All right. Now, we had a question, and MW, I've lost it. Oh, man, I've lost it. What am I going to do? He's here. Touch on the subject of in doubling. Okay. 
Uh, I think that's pretty much all I've got to cover with grading. Oh, one more thing. You can go to uh, the CoinOp Facebook group if you're part of Facebook. I've got a link down underneath this video that will take you to that Facebook group. Oh, give you something here to look at. And if you can take a picture of your coin, a lot of times you can say, what is the grade on this? And they'll be fairly close, but you'll get a consensus. That's a key thing. You have a lot of people who say it's good. It's very good. You know, it's about good. You have one guy says, it's MS65, you know, red. Well, just throw it to one that's, that doesn't fit. And you'll have a lot of them in a, in a zone. And, and there's where you can start. And you can quickly narrow it down to a, a good, accurate grading. Incus, huh? What do we got here? Is there incus on that? There we go. I've got some incus marks on this. Oh, a shield would have it. Let me grab a shield. I know I've got a bunch of them here. There they are. We can't see it. All right. Next scope. Ding ding. Here you go. You've got incus letters on the shield here in E Pluribus Unum. There are a few other coins that have incus uh, devices. The uh, well, the five dollar gold Indian, for example. Here's a cent over here where E Pluribus Unum is in cues. Okay, you have to understand how the dies are made. For an in cues device on a coin, you've got to have on the die uh, raised details. Okay, so that when the die punches into the planchet, these raised on the die leaves a an in cues mark on the coin. Now it's that die that's all important for doubling. It's the die that is doubled. Okay, so when the hub hits the die, the hub looks like the coin will look. The hub hits the die to leave an impression in the die. Uh, so if the hub has incused devices, the die will have raised devices and then you know leave an incused mark on the coin. So if the hub hits that die twice, but it's a little bit off, it's going to shrink that raised section on the die. Okay, it's going to it's going to shrink it. It's going to chop it down. It's going to be thinner, so that on the coin. The incus is thinner. Now, on a regular device, look at the uh, the T's. Okay, this is going to be an incus mark on the die. E pluribus unum would be uh, a raised device on the die. So, if the if it's doubled um, on the die, the devices would be squeezed. They'd be shut shut down. They'd be shorter. They'd be thinner, so that you would have smaller and thinner devices on the coin. Whereas if the die is doubled uh, on the you know, United States of America, you should be looking at wider and thicker letters and devices. Uh, Incus is the opposite of, of raised devices just because the way it works at the die level. Remember, you've got a working hub, makes a working die, which makes the coin. And it goes back there, you've got the master the hub, makes the master die, which makes a working hub, which makes a the working guy, which makes a coin. Yeah, it's a big you know, process. So, in juice doubling, you're looking for thinner devices. And I hope I explained that in a way that makes sense. Now, we're 348, so it's time for a giveaway. Alrighty. I don't have anything planned. What am I going to do? Okay, let's think about it. Mm -hmm. Want to talk about Indian cents? Oh, I've got this right here. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, okay. There's always something right in front of me to grab. And let's look at that. Okay, what's the trivia should be? Should it be what's the name of the bird? No, it's it's Penny. I'm sure. The name birds and cats after it. Uh, real neat thing here. These came out in 1856, and these were just hideous. Okay, this one's kind of scratched up. Uh, these were replaced after just a few years. Three years they ran them, and the Indian scent came around. So what were the three years? Here's a trivia question. What were the three years during which the Flying Eagle scent was produced? And we know one of them is 1957. And the first one to get that answer correctly is going to win a folder a loop, 
and your choice of book. And we've already got a winner. Whoa! Now that book might have a little bit dog-eared on one corner. Ah, it's mostly good. We've already got a winner. And it looks like Bill J. Are you a new collector, Bill J? Because that's, that's who I'm seeing over here. 1856, 1857, and 1858 is when they made that penny. Am I showing this right? Yes. And uh, in 1858, they had large and small letters on that, which is pretty darn interesting. So there's always one more thing to collect. Then you have the proof version. So now you're up to, you know, six, seven, eight coins to complete that whole set. So Bill J, you have it. And I'm going to throw in some cotton gloves rather than latex. And they're back here somewhere. Here they are. And I can guarantee you there's no way these will fit your fingers. Ain't gonna happen. These are made in Sri Lanka. And they're made for starving Sri Lankan hands. Uh, I cut the fingers off. There we go. And I just use the finger gloves. They're pretty damn handy. But if you're small or have somebody small in your family, uh, then these will probably fit. But me, I get these big meat hooks, and there's no way that's going to work. But hey, look, you can get these. And if you want to move coins around, let me see if we can see that. You want to move that coin around with a cotton glove. It's a whole lot easier. You're not going to get fingerprints on it. Uh, also, it's a good idea before you handle um, some proof or uncirculated coins, wash your hands. And when you're done handling a bunch of coins, especially these, uh, you know, these old brown filthy things. You go through wheat bags or a bunch of rolls, wash your hands. I mean, I set down a towel on the desk and when I'm done, I mean, it's black. I don't wash them. I take them out to the burn pit and throw them in there and light them up. There we go. I'm going to leave you with this. So, Bill, what I'm going to need you to do, right up somewhere here, right up. Well, it's not there. Let's go back home. There's home. Up here, you're going to see my email address. Uh, send me your shipping information. Where can I send the loop, the folder? And tell me right now which book you like so I can have that at the ready. And I've got some clips I'm going to include in there because uh, Beth Coddington has been so generous in supporting this channel. And we, we get a couple of dozen of these. And I'm going to get you a graded set of coins. Okay, so you have your own reference set to, set to get started with. I'm not going to send you the PCGS. Uh, Sat in 69, but I'll see to it. We've got good, very good, fine, very fine, extremely fine AU and an uncirculated coin in there. And what the heck, it'll give you a good start. So, get me that information. Anybody else? I've got more loops available. Here, 10x. I've lost my place. There we go. These are 10x loops. Uh, if you want to get into looking at coins, they're wonderful, they fit in the palm of your hand. They're that big. A child could pick these up. Christmas is coming. They're $3 a piece. Two of them are for $5.50. Keep one in your truck, one in the garage, one in the kitchen table, one on that table, and one in your pocket. And they got this little loop on the back where you can hook a lanyard to it if you should have to have a lanyard. Okay, but I've got flips and well, whatever else you need. And we go from there. Beth says, do you want me to send you some money for pants? No, send me some pants. You said yours were hip huggers. We'll trade. That says you're most welcome. And go to her channel because she helps, if she supports all these video channels. Uh, I think she's probably the most supportive person out there as far as promoting all this YouTube community stuff. Those, those folks with new channels especially, uh, not a lot of people know that they're even out there. Now, I've got a directory. And I don't know if I put that in descriptions, but uh, it has a list of different uh, different YouTube videos where people talk about coins, uh, some live streams where people talk about coins regularly uh, on a schedule and live. What are my streaming days? Right now I have two streams that I do. I do the uh, Saturday class every 3 o'clock or every Saturday at 3 o'clock. And uh, some are better than others, but they're all important because, you know, we're starting at, you know, we're at the bottom. We start at the bottom and work our way up. You know, we'll talk about grading this week and next week we'll talk about something else. Probably how to use that spreadsheet. 
but three o'clock that's eastern time and it's right here uh, should be up at the top of your screen uh, so bookmark it and come on back and there's a bell down here below you know just above the descriptions uh, you click that bell and it'll give you a you know notification when I'm online and if I schedule these things you know in the in the computer here uh, it'll let you know that you know it's coming up what are your streaming days oh and also we have the uh, Friday night uh, midnight madness I started experimenting with uh, selling coins live and the, the results were outstanding I'm pretty happy with it and I'm gonna keep playing with that for a little while and if need be uh, I'll jump to uh, you know prime time spot but I'd like to do a Saturday uh, evening you know like say six o'clock uh, time for for the coin sales but I want to kind of get it off to a slow start so I can practice and tweak it and get it right first so Saturday three o'clock and then may, later something else I'm sure are you gonna keep doing that yes until I can suck you dry you're darn right uh, I want to get some uh, I want to do like a dollar deal day where I just put up all kinds of coins that are adult you know like a 1956 D and BU and I can get 50 of them and help yourself get as many as you like or you can get you know a 56 or 57 or 58 or 59 and uh, you know fill your collection with some of these BUs because they're quite affordable uh, the, what kills it is the uh, the shipping Jeez, you're gonna spend three bucks on shipping for a two dollar coin it doesn't make any sense but if you can get a bunch of them all together uh, you can save on the shipping because I combine it uh, that is what a, a tenth of an ounce is what we're talking uh, I see uh, you know on eBay add a dollar for each additional coin or they don't combine the shipping so you pay three dollars shipping on that one you pay three dollars for shipping on that one you pay three dollars shipping on this one they put it all in one envelope and put a stamp on it no you know what that upsets me when they do that I ship in uh, padded envelopes. Here we go. I'm going to ship it in a padded envelope. I'll put a piece of cardboard in there so it's guard armor. Just go through my old videos and you'll see. And of course, we've got bubbles. Fill it up. Printed label. Uh, priority mail. This gives you tracking so I know where it is. You know where it is. And if it gets there, if it doesn't get there, we both know it. It's right out in the open. Cheryl says, I really like the cup around you're showing. It's here somewhere. Here's one. I can put that under the big camera. I think. Yeah, it is. And so I'm going to put that on. And that's the, that's the round. It's a walking liberty design. Uh, I just got word that, well, I'm looking at the desk and I'm thinking, why do I have so many? I got more than here than I should. Well, I just got the word that I sent out a package earlier this week and it arrived uh, and didn't include a whole darn roll. Oh, okay. I'll get that out to you, Alan. It's on the way already. But these are uh, beautiful rounds. They're an ounce. And I don't handle these with bare hands because, well, first off, they're pretty much untouched. Although I do, I do have four of them that are fingered up. And... It's not a perfect match for the Walking Liberty half, but it's a pretty darn nice one. Okay, and they're big, they're fat, and they're $2. But if you put that in a, a stocking, because I'm going to put that in, uh, I'm going to put that on a 2 by 2 so it stays, stays pretty. Suppress the urge to take it out of the flip and handle it. And it should be beautiful forever. But uh, people are liking these. They are a really good gift. Um, you can customize these and put your, you know, put your business card or something in there, or you can print something off on the computer and cut it out and, and put in the top half and, you know, says Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday or Happy Graduation or, or whatever you've got. And Over the Edge 924 has joined us. Good to see you. I want to watch your video. I've been trying to get stuff. I'm covering half the chat. I've been trying to get stuff done, but I don't feel very good. Beth, I hope you're feeling better. I've been trying to get stuff done, but I've been watching Beth Coddington's videos. Well, I hope she stops making them for a little while, so at least get the dishes done. But if you like these copper rounds, you can order them. They're $2 a piece, and I'll probably get more. 
people are grabbing them up. And I'd like to get some of the buffalo style designs. Uh, I get a bunch of them at a time, you know, a hundred at a time, so that I can get them to you for two dollars. You know, shipping is still three dollars. But go back to uh, oh the midnight madness sale, and I'll combine shipping on everything I send to you. Doesn't matter, you know, if you bought it on on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, on, on you know, e uh, an email from eBay, wherever. I um, mean, it's coming from me and going to you. I can put it all in one, in one container and combine shipping and what just plain makes sense. Heavy metal. I love the copper rounds. I have several. Outstanding. And we'll go from there. Okay. I didn't get the name. I think it was, was it Jim? Oh my God. I didn't write it down. I'll have to go back and find his name. It was Bill J. Make sure I write it down here. Bill J, I need to know if you want the red book or the black book. And send me an email with your address and shipping information so I can get these out to you. Uh, Shay Hoffman got last week's package. He was real happy with that. Uh, he sent me the best compliment I've probably ever had. Except for the girl at the bar who says, You're like really cute. But no matter. Sebastian says, I have no copper rounds. Where can I get some? I have the one design right now, um, the Walking Liberty design you see here, and they're $2 a piece. And I've got, I believe, 28 uh, still available. And Bill is going to take the Red Book. Good choice. And next week we'll offer you know, somebody else the Black Book, and they get a choice too. Uh, that one is in great shape. Hardcover. I mean, you can look at it. It's not dog-eared at all. It's hardly used. There's no writing in there. You'll be happy with it. Got pretty pictures in color. But the prices in here are two years old. Now, I'll have the link I'll put below to get you to Numus, and you're going to find more realistic prices. Uh, and these, of course, are two years old. But they, they're usually uh, kind of high on a lot of things. The market has been kind of low lately, uh, and these prices are two years old in the book. But the information is priceless. The information is timeless. It doesn't matter what the market does, the information is always the same. So we'll go from there. And Beth loves her package. I'm glad to see it. Folks, I've got to get some things caught up. I haven't done the dishes in four days. Uh, there's flies in the kitchen. I've got to take care of that. And the mintages never change. That's correct. And uh, I've got a few things to pack up and get out. Have a look around my uh, you know, all my other videos. I'm sure you'll you'll find something good. And remember, information doesn't go out of style. So go back and watch last week's class or the week before, and come back for next week's because I'll keep adding stuff to it, and we'll talk more about coins. Alrighty, great stream says Beth. It was great having you all here. Uh, it is you folks doing what you do that makes it possible for me to do what I do. Hmm. So I want to thank you. I really appreciate, you know, just, just hitting like, just subscribing, just watching, you know, the whole darn thing, putting up with me. Ray says, hi, I did dishes before class. I get the dishes, you know, here's the coffee. Um, I, I do my dishes by, by closing the bag and taking them out to the barrel out here. And then I go to the store and buy more dishes. It really is handy. For me, it's a thing. I'm looking for disposable clothing next. I mean, really, you can't make it out of paper. You know, just throw it in the burn bin. Opening up, open up a package of wardrobe. Awesome stream. Thank you, Cheryl. And Beth loves me. Well, we love you too, Beth. You get over and check out Beth's channel. You'll fall in love with her in a second. And Sparrow has a copper dime. Go down to, uh, in the link below, you'll see the link to uh, Coin Up on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. Put up a picture of that copper dime. From what you say already, I'm thinking it's just missing a clad layer, which is pretty darn impressive find all by itself. It might be just dirty. I'm going to be skeptical without a, you know, without a photo. But let's see it. Oldies is here. Thanks, Oldies, for coming in. That's what I do, Ken. Watch and like. Watch, like, interact. Um, I was talking to, or Couch was talking last night on his channel uh, about how things were. You know, when he was a kid, when he was a kid, and how much they change in just, you know, 20, 25 years. And digital technology. We got this camera over here. There we go. 
it's that big. I, I put on this this big giant tripod. Uh, this camera has really improved things because I can take a picture of a wide area of the coins. Uh, I've got this other camera here that does. Let me see if I can make this work. It takes close-ups where I can zoom in and look inside say the C. I can zoom in and look at that sort of detail. And we couldn't do this 10 years ago. We couldn't do this five years ago. That's how much we've all changed. Uh, where it's going to go, we don't really know. YouTube, the coin videos, they're out there. Uh, Justin's got you know, 30,000 uh, subscribers on his channel. Where is it going to be in another couple of years? Good Lord, we're trying out new things. You got people that do their video channels. They talk about coins. They show off their collection. If that's all you do, we'd love to see it. Jeez, come on. Give us some bragging stuff. Take your bragging rights and, and show us your, your videos. Show us your collection. Um, I'm doing this class. There are people that search through coin rolls and auction stuff off. Uh, I've just started selling coins. And that can be a pretty powerful tool. So we're all pioneering this. Just the technology has changed so much in the past 10 years. You know, everybody's got a camera on their phone. Bobby says, I've been here since class started. I sit in the back of the class and take notes. Oh, by all means, take notes. Where are we here? Okay. I take notes on every single coin. Uh, you can keep it in a notebook. Well, I'm trying to get these down for, uh, for ease of use. Oh, let's say 1968. Oh, look, I've got this other camera here. You're going to love this. I can show you my notes. Okay, 1968. I'm looking for, you ready, for DDOs. I'm looking for Liberty at the top and the bottom, right? L-I, and that's on the L on the I. I'm looking for a curve on the back of the B. I'm looking for uh, IGWT 60, uh, what does that mean? 60 TR. Well, it's going to be TR, but I don't know what the 60 means. Okay, I'll get to work on my notes. But for uh, DDRs, I'm looking at the top right corners, and I'm looking at all letters on the proof version. Uh, and I've got that for, you know, almost every coin. I haven't done, oh, 69 yet. That's a blank sheet. But when I go through rolls of coins, I sort them into years. Uh, and then I want to go through each year at mint mark. And that's where these notes are coming really handy. At the top, I can tell you, oh, let's see if I can get this whole thing in there. DDOs, Copper Coins has five DDOs. Wexler, that's the W. He's got five listed, and Variety Vista has five. Uh, DDRs, you can see some discrepancies, 6, 8, and 11. Uh, the RPMs for 1940S, that's what this page is, uh, 9, 18, and 9. So there's... You really need to check all of these places to uh, to find out stuff. And it's got mint mark uh, variety number two on that one. So that tells me what I want to look for. Notes are key. Notes is the next step in your evolution. Remember, you coin collecting is about accumulation. It's accumulative accumulation of coins, accumulation of equipment, accumulation of knowledge but also accumulation of skills and development where you take that next step and start you know, cataloging things for yourself or, or tracking notes and uh, developing these, uh, oh, the checklists or making videos about coins. Uh, don't hold back. Remember, there's nothing you can't do. And all you have to do to make that statement true is believe it. Most of the time, it's just the attempt that, uh, the, that gets it done. It doesn't have to be great. It'll be great after you've done it 50 times. But the first time you do it, just getting it done is all the achievement you need. Okay? You can declare success if you got it done. Sparrow says he needs some info books. Keep coming back here because every week we, we have another one. Um, the next one, I've got black, the black book. And I've got, oh, where did it go? Is that another red book? That's my red book. Uh, I used 2015 because I'm just too darn cheap to spend the 20 bucks for a new one. I had another one. Here we go. Um, oh, I'm going to get back to this. This is the uh, 
the mint errors uh, by Herbert uh, with the uh, oh the trivia contest which I've got to get to and some coins will be given away with that let's see I had some more books here there is a catalog and encyclopedia of coins I'll offer that next week which one do you like one or the other we'll go from there but I figured that red book would be the first one to go I had some more well, we'll find it. They're buried. It's, it's such a mess back there, I just could barely function anyway. Okay, we're running uh, 4 o'clock. We're running past the hour, and uh, that's pretty good. Much past an hour, we start to lose attention. So I'm going to call it good right here so people have, you know, it's an hour. They can watch the whole darn video. Sparrow takes notes. My notes are so scrambled. Dates high, low, everywhere in the book. Um... That you're taking notes is, is more important than than how well ordered they are. You can order them later, but you can't put your notes in order if you don't have any notes. So get a notebook and go from there. Okay, folks, I want to thank you for coming in and watch the whole thing again. Go check out the Midnight Madness video because a lot of those coins are still available. And good luck and happy hunting. We'll see you guys later now.